a view of the Capitol in Washington. Republican lawmakers hope to send the new tax bill to the White House by Christmas. Tom Brenner, New York Times, want to get this briefing by email. Here's the sign up. Good morning. Here's what you need to know. Understanding the tax plan, business is the big winner in the $1.5 trillion overhaul of the tax code the House unveiled on Thursday, though the bill offers modest savings for middle class families. We compiled six charts to explain the plan. For individuals, the proposal would limit the popular mortgage interest deduction and cap the state and local tax deduction. But it doesn't change 401k plans, as had been widely feared. The architects of the bill said it would deliver a tax break of $1,182 a year to a family of four earning $59,000 a year. How much would you save? It's too soon to predict, writes our personal finance columnist, Ron Lieber, but the benefits to the middle class may be fleeting. We talked to economists about the pros and cons of the measure, which supporters say would lift the economy. Four clues in New York attack. Pieces of paper and two cell phones found at the scene of Tuesday's truck attack in Lower Manhattan appear to show how the suspect, Sio Saipov, became radicalized. On Thursday, the Islamic State made an uncharacteristically late claim of responsibility for the rampage, which killed eight people and wounded 12. New York began placing hundreds of concrete barriers along the bike path where the attack occurred. After a cyclist was killed in a crash last year, a ghost bike was set up as a memorial at Western Chambers Streets in Lower Manhattan. On Thursday, people adorned the memorial with flowers in tribute to those killed in Tuesday's terrorist attack. Chang W. lead New York Times separately, Islamic State fighters were ousted from the last foothold in a major Syrian city, state-run television reported today, Allahu Akbar we look at the everyday Arabic phrase, meaning God is great, that has been seized on by jihadists. A contradiction on Russia, President Trump and Attorney General Jeff Sessions have both said that they didnt know of anybody in the Trump campaign who had been in contact with Russians. Court documents unsealed this week suggest otherwise. The documents also mentioned Sam Clovis, a former Trump campaign aide who was in the running for a senior position at the Department of Agriculture. On Thursday, he dropped out. Mr. Trump begins an 11 day trip to Asia today. Myanmar leader visits site of atrocities. Dorong San Suu Kyi traveled to the state where the UN and international human rights groups say the military is waging an ethnic cleansing campaign against Rohingya Muslims. The Nobel Peace Prize laureate controls the country's civilian government but has no authority over its military. There is little overlap between the international and domestic narratives. Myanmar's government says the Rohingya are killing their own people. A Rohingya woman and her child returning to the Basara camp in Sitwe, the provincial capital of Rakhine State in Myanmar. Adam Dean for the New York Times The Daily A Hate Crime, or a wound of war a Marine attacked an Iraqi restaurant in Oregon. But what constitutes a hate crime, and how does the legal system treat combat veterans listen on a computer, an iOS device or an Android device? Business Jerome Powell, President Trump's nominee to lead the Federal Reserve, has supported Janet Yellen's approach and is seen as a centrist and pragmatist. We look at Mr. Powell's background and at the legacy of Ms. Yellen, the top economic policymaker in the U.S. since 2014. Jerome Powell, 64, is a member of the Federal Reserve Board who has worked in investment banking and the Treasury Department. Lexi Swell for the New York Times Robert Mercer is stepping down as Kotchef executive of a $50 billion hedge fund that has been criticized for his embrace of polarizing political figures including Stephen Bannon, where the STEM jobs are enthusiasm for science, technology, engineering and mathematics assumes those fields are flush with opportunity. Some are, some aren't, Dana Anfo and Gothamist, two leading sites for local news, were shut down on Thursday, a week after employees in New York voted to join a union. U.S. stocks were mixed on Thursday. Here's a snapshot of global markets. Smarter living tips, both new and old, for a more fulfilling life. Think twice if your doctor suggests a stent to deal with cardiac pain. It's possible to end your frustration and fulfill your dreams. Recipe of the day double down on flavor with salmon in anchovy garlic butter sauce. Noteworthy floating schools in Bangladesh. 
In today's 360 video, Step Aboard a Houseboat that Doubles as a School, part of a program started in response to flooding during monsoons, partisan writing You Should NT Miss. Writers from across the political spectrum discuss this week's terrorist attack in New York City, UN sees an emergency in the Pacific. Water and electricity to a detainee camp in Papua New Guinea have been cut off, but hundreds of asylum seekers refused to let Australia move them. Trump's Twitter account was deleted for 11 minutes. A rogue customer support worker deactivated President Trump's personal account on his or her last day at the company, ready for the weekend. At the S, our critics gush over Lady Bird, directed by Greta Gerwig, and are supportive of Richard Linklater's Last Flag Flying and Marvel's Thor Ragnarok. We also recommend 11 new books, the best offerings on Ing services in November, and the five theater productions you should see if you're in New York this month. Best of late night TV, Trevor Noah felt bad for Russian agents on social media in the old days. Espionage meant using exploding pens and poison-tipped umbrellas, he said. Now they have to use the same tool as your divorce aunt. Quotation of the day, you can climb into the game, into the television, and you're not thinking about your flooded house. Amy Weiss, a Houston rabbi who had Game 7 of the World Series from a new home because her old one was wrecked by Hurricane Harvey. An international team of researchers announced Thursday that they had discovered a hidden void within the Great Pyramid of Giza. Many archaeologists said the empty space was most likely by design, but not a hidden room for the pharaoh's riches. Hassan Amar Associated Press backstory clocks fall back an hour in most of the US and Canada on Sunday, after having done so last week in Europe, with the end of daylight saving time. Clocks in parts of Australia have moved, too, in the opposite direction. The reason for the shift is contentious and confusing. It isnt for farmers, as you may have learned in school. Get ready to enjoy that extra hour in bed. Sandora Ferry European Press Photo Agency historians have traced the notion for daylight saving time to Benjamin Franklin, who realized he was sleeping through some daylight hours while visiting Paris in the 18th century. But the first plan to actually move the clock hands came from William Willett, who unsuccessfully proposed daylight saving time to the British Parliament in 1908. Germany, seeking cost savings during World War I, heard the idea and enacted it in 1915. Three weeks later, the British followed, and other world powers were close behind, including the U.S. in 1918. Despite the common belief that American farmers supported the change, they were actually the strongest lobby against it because it disrupted their schedules, said David Prerau, the author of Seize the Daylight. I don't know how that ever became a myth, but it is the exact opposite, he said. You can find out more about daylight saving time here. Daniel Victor contributed reporting, underscore 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 your morning briefing is published weekdays at 6 a.m. Eastern and updated all morning. Browse past briefings here. If photographs appear out of order, please download the updated New York Times app from iTunes or Google Play. What would you like to see here? Contact us at briefing at nighttimes.com. You can get the briefing delivered to your inbox Sunday through Friday. We have four global editions, timed for the Americas, Europe, Asia and Australia. Check out our range of free newsletters here.